like as you kind of mentioned, as an artist, I come on United Market, I'm able to essentially, I connect my Spotify, I connect my Apple Music, we then scan that. From that, we look at all the beats from your top songs, and then we recommend you producers who have beats stored on their United Market account that fit those criteria. The second stage would then be you could then use our songwriter AI tool, which helps you generate song lyrics and verses, essentially, based off of keywords that have generated top hits in comparison to your current discography and your top songs. So it helps kind of learn from your flow and it's almost like your personal assistant that learns from what do you like and it generates outputs that actually help you be able to write your songs and help, I would say, studio inefficiency. And so for artists, that's kind of like a big thing because studios time is one of the most expensive, I would say, expenses for independent musician. And we create tools that help save them time and money there. Mm. Um, that I would say that extends all the way to like our demo feature, which allows you to hear your voice on a full track from a 30 second clip. So you upload a 30 second clip, you upload a beat, you type out the lyrics and it generates a full complete output and you can hear yourself on the song before you even record it. And that kind of stuff saves these musicians time and money, which allows them to go to the studio session and actually be able to be more efficient. Yo, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Mr. J. Hill, and welcome to another episode of the J. Hill Podcast. But right now, I want to give a special thank you and shout out to our sponsor, that's Top Dog Law. So look, man, if you're suffering from medical malpractice, a slip and fall, especially a car accident, make sure you call my guy Top Dog Law. That's Top Dog Law on Instagram and topdoglaw.com. Look, if you check out his Instagram, you'll see he uploading big checks. I mean, like every day. I ain't talking about the little ones. The big ones. So shout out to my guy, Top Dog Law, topdoglaw.com. Get that money. I know I'm trying to get it. We ready to go? Let's get it popping. I got Ron is in the building. Sincere is in here. What's up, fellas? What's going on? How United you Market, right? Yes, sir. What's yes, the, sir. um, y'all, y'all been, I seen y'all been like doing this little promo run for a second now. What's going on, man? Yeah, so we recently just got Pull your mic closer, too. We recently just got out of, um, this tech program that's, a, really a global phenomenon in the tech space and it really just propelled us and being from Atlanta it was just like our home base is where the biggest hip hop scene is as of now mm -hmm. and we just wanted to really lay some roots and really start like letting people know who's behind the company what we do and how we actually going to be empowering the next generation of musicians so wait 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 y'all just got out of this tech situation right and that's what made y'all create United Market or that's why y'all pushing it that's what I would say has become, made us more a little bit more relevant mm. and allowing us to actually be able to start, you know, um, doing partnerships with various artists, things of that nature. That's kind of allowing us to have more visibility. Okay, so I guess before we even go there, right, because I just jumped straight into it, what is United Market for the people that don't know? Yeah, so United yes. Market essentially a, is a collaboration platform mm -hmm. for artists and producers to make music. Um, we essentially streamline everything that normally is what causes there to be mishaps in the music business. Mm -hmm. And we kind of, I would say, battle that stigma of the music business is shady. What makes y'all different, though? Because everybody say that. Like, I mean, everybody uh, come in, man, I want to help you guys out, help the artists out, for the artists and for the artists. Everybody say that. What makes y'all different? One, we're young. Mm -hmm. Two, we're... Uh... We're accessible. Like everybody on our platform can contact any one of us at any given time, any time of the night, any time of the day. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's like the the biggest thing is how serious we take our relationships and how we treat our customers, and the, we value everybody that's a part of our team and our our environment, our community. So, I think that's really the biggest thing is just, you know, our intentions. Like our intentions are really there for everything that he just mentioned. For real. My bad, yo. This fucking this. Cheers, uncomfortable. I gave y'all my good cheers, bro. Say you thank know, you, man. Yeah, thank you, bro. Nah, nah, thank girl. you, broski. <laughs> this shit is not good. This shit is whack. But whatever. Uh, all right. Um, so y'all went to Morehouse. Yeah. Right? Because I think that's interesting, that the fact that you said y'all young, right? Because mm. a lot of times what happens is when you old, you get into it in any industry, right? It could be tech. It could be a nine to five. And a lot of times mm. companies only hire new people because they can, they can be coachable. They have new ideas and things like that. Older guys, usually, it works, so we don't want to change it, right? So the fact that y'all are young, I think that's a great point. Coming from Morehouse, right, or being young, one of the, one of the two, whatever you can use to answer this question, 
being so young and coming from Morehouse, what were some of the things that you saw was missing in the industry that made y'all want to fill that void? Like, what void was missing in the industry that made y'all want to fill? Well, the new generation of, like, music producers and musicians in general um, were oftentimes, I would say, having issues with get, getting paid on time. Mm. And that was probably, like, one of the biggest things that we saw um, because when we were at Morehouse, we launched, like, an app. We really, like, pulled all our capital together and built an app that was just, like, a, just a social networking platform for mm. musicians. And then from that, like, people were getting he paid through it. Um, we had paid out around $200,000 during our junior year. Yeah. And that well, y'all got paid or y'all paid out? We paid out and we made a percent of all transactions on the platform. What's the percentage y'all made? 10%. It's not bad. Yeah, 10%. But y'all still paid out $200,000. Yeah. Well, that's not bad. Okay. And yeah. during that time period, we just saw like a spike. And then we saw an opportunity that like musicians are really our audience, I would say, that really benefited from a service that allowed them to actually be able to collect the money they're owed on time. And as he mentioned, a lot of these bigger companies, they forget about the smaller creators, the independent creators. And that was where we really were like focusing our niche. And that's what, and then those creators went on to do great things in the industry. And that's kind of what propelled us, you know, to like that next level. So, wait, what did y'all have, what did y'all do to make this $200,000? Yeah. So, <laughs> like for the, for the artists, of course. Like, yeah. what, what, what was so special about what y'all offered? Yeah. So, it was like a, it was almost like LinkedIn for musicians. I would, that's how I would describe it. It was LinkedIn for musicians with all like financial tech solutions. So invoicing, recurring payments, subscriptions, things of that nature, escrow payments. So it really helped musicians be able to, I would say, any process or I guess situation they would be in, allow them to actually be able to collect their payments. And we had around 10,000 users at the time that we had got in about 90 days. And that really is what I would say allowed them to get value because they were able to co collaborate with everybody globally. Okay, so I have uh, 70. No, 66,000 followers on Instagram, right? 73,000 subscribers. But all of those subscribers was hard as hell. It took me years to get, right? So you said 90 days, I got 10,000. How? What is, like, I'm conf Let me know. What happened? <laughs> Virality. Yeah. I, 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 don't, I think with the social media thing, I don't think it's no, no answer to that. I think, you know, everybody's case is different. It's, you know, you catch that algorithm, consistency, of course. You know, it, it it's like many factors that play... Maybe it was just timing for us. I think mm. that's really, I think that was the biggest thing for real. Was like, COVID happened. Yeah, like when COVID happened, like the timing was just perfect because I think everybody was just in a sense of like being on their phone more, you know, looking for other like ways and opportunities, especially in the music industry. Like COVID really changed the music industry. So I think we came in at the perfect time and we were pushing our agenda during that moment and it just was, you know, we was able to capitalize off that. So break this down for me, all right? Because I'm just trying to get people to understand. Even for the smallest artists that come up. When you talk about the missing link, right? The void mm -hmm. that y'all felt like y'all had to fill was artists getting paid on time. I'm, I'm, I'm sure mad artists can agree with that or empathize with that, right? Yes, sir. How does making sure artists get paid on time get you paid or even them... Well, not paid because they're going to get paid regardless, but how do you... How, how is it that 10,000 people are coming to you guys and that's the void that y'all feeling? Because, they, I mean, they still going to get paid eventually, I guess, but I'm curious, like, yeah. them getting paid on time, how was that making you money or how was that a thing? Yeah, so it's one was actually, like, speeding up the timeline in regards to receiving payments. Like, musicians are kind of like us. They're entrepreneurs. So right. the money they make is from their craft. And right. so they need money on time so they can build out a lifestyle that's sustainable. And then on top of that, we were... Uh, providing new opportunities. And so we were allowing musicians to be able to network with other musicians, which then would allow them to make songs together, which then in return would help them then generate more revenue from their craft. And that's kind of, I would say, where we really were targeting. And then when COVID happened, everything went digital. You didn't really have studios open. Producers weren't really working with one another in person. Artists weren't really work working with producers in person at the like start of it. And our platform allowed for file sharing to happen as well. So you were really able to like cook up and share like music with your friends and colleagues like from your house. And all of our music during that time was like some of the biggest hits that were coming out in the industry our musicians were being a part of. Like what? In a Minute was a song that came out, um, which is one of Lil Baby's biggest hits. It was done by two of our producers, Hayes and Kai Going Crazy. Um, so how did they, how did Lil Baby's producer, or how did they get 
contact through the app? How did they find out about you? Why would they even? Because I'm again, I'm, I'm an artist. I'm like, I don't. Everybody's doubters, right? I don't believe these. Why, why, why was little baby people hitting up some guys that just started? Yeah, so I wouldn't say they necessarily just started. They were younger, but they still had some like so, some top songs under their belt. Uh, we did a partnership with uh, a management group um, known as Unknown Ventures, and um, at that time, it was ran by one of my dear friends, Kearney, rest in peace. Um, we partnered up with them, and his essentially with that, we started actually being like the technology service they use for their day-to-day basis in regards to their music career. And that is what kind of what promoted that to happen when those when Kai and Hayes clicked up and then that record came out, I would say that helped, I would say, be proof of like concept, concept mm-hmm. that like this platform is actually not only helping empower musicians, but they actually have a pool of talent that is, I would say, coming up. Like these mm-hmm. were a lot of these cats were like younger. This was a lot of their major songs were coming out those years. And I will say like kind of he mentioned it was good timing, mm-hmm. especially for us in regards to like some of our musicians being like I would say part of some of the biggest hits that were coming out during that COVID 2022 like era. You know, it's crazy because y'all talk, talk to on like having like a lot of guys, not just starting, but like just on a, not on a scene, like not as big as your, I don't know, take key for mm-hmm. out of forever rolling. Right. Mm-hmm. And I, it's crazy because we see uh, Issa Rae talk about this and we talk about like just the power of networking across and all, instead of always trying to network up. Right. We see the power in that. Yeah. And it's crazy because I was talking about this before when I was the midst of my university, Mr. Cotman State University. And I feel like what made me so special was I had a relationship with everybody, right? A lot of times people always want to reach for the stars mm-hmm. when really the if, if if I'm a star, I don't want to talk to that peasant, right? I'm just saying the, the, right, right. the natural idea of it. But if I can connect with the average people, for the people that's listening, um, quote, unquote, if I can connect with the average people, or the regular people, quote unquote, then I could have a bigger audience. I feel like people sleep on that so much. So the fact that y'all built this app, but it's mm-hmm. like, man, it's a bunch of underground guys, right? Of course, there's some people that got big hits, but mm-hmm. I feel like that's super important. Yeah, I mean, especially, I mean, when you look at the music industry, we we only we tend to think of our bigger names mm-hmm. all the time. Yeah. But the music industry is a billion dollar industry, but it makes most of its money off of these guys that we cater to. So these independent artists, you know, even your producers who may not have your top placements, like that's literally the mass majority of people that make up the music industry. Mm. So of course it's like strength in numbers. So it's like, of course we still focus on like the quality of who we're bringing on to our platform. But of course when you like even a playing field, as you said, and not try to aim for the stars all the time, you know, you kind of build a bigger network. It's crazy because even in that though, like I've learned over this uh, past two years that a lot of the guys that's making money might not be the biggest artists. For example, right? Mm-hmm. Let's say K Camp, right? K Camp was a, a super huge artist at one point. Mm-hmm. Now he's probably like low key, right? I talked to him, he still make bag, he still sell For out sure. shows. But to the your average audience or the the, the the regular person on the street, they probably who is K Camp? He's he fell off. You know what I'm saying? But whole right. time he's still flourishing. Right. So I met this guy named um Lord Afriana. He's written for Beyonce, Jadenda. Never heard of this guy, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like it's, you had, like you said, it's a billion dollar industry. You have so many people like this who are working, who does bring mm-hmm. great quality. And the fact that y'all got something like this, I think is 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 dope as hell. Like, and I feel like Thank more you. people should be a part of it. I, what would you say the the hardest part to get people on the uh, the track or the or the train of United Market if y'all had one? Getting people to believe. Yeah. The biggest issue we had was we kept delaying our release date. It was just because, like, our, all four of us are perfectionists. And so it just, we kept delaying the app. And then people started believing, thinking that it wasn't really going to come out. Mm-hmm. And then I kind of, I would say, stimulated, like, stemmed um, doubt. And then I guess us being younger at the time was also a doubt in regards to, like, does this product do, do what it says it's going to do? Okay. And when we were able to kind of show proof of concept time on time again, that's what I would say kind of just put us in a better position. So I hear, of course, I mean, we're in today's society, I hear United Market. Of course, I think of United Masters, right? What's the, the difference or the biggest difference between the two? Like, why United Market and why so close to United Masters? <sighs> yeah, so to start off, actually, the name stemmed from our co-founder and president, William. We He said he was going to come up with the name after we said we were going to build an app that was going to become United Market. We didn't have a name for it. 
mm-hmm. he just randomly came up with the name United Market. And at that time, we weren't necessarily focused on the music industry. That was like the crazy part. When those transactions happened that showed that the music industry was an opportunity for us, we then pivoted. And of course, then we were like, okay, we sound similar to United Masters. Um, the biggest difference, though, is they really deal with like independent artists as we're more so focused on the actual like songwriters and music producers. Mm. And so we're almost like we work in partnership with distribution hubs like United Masters, Vidia, Symphonic, who we recently just mm-hmm. did a partnership with at a joint venture and signed one of our first artists, Savvy Third. Um, we work with these distributors. And mm. so like United Masters being known for distribution, those are the type of partners in which we work with in regards to helping offer them A&R services with our technology. Okay. So for, let's say, an artist that might not be the biggest, right? Mm-hmm. But he ain't smaller, you know what I mean? He, he doing his thing. Mm-hmm. What do you guys, like, I don't know, how do you pitch this to them? Or what's the benefit of an artist that's like, I don't know, a, let's say, a, I don't know, y'all know who Kai Cash is? or a, um CYN? Yeah, or like, yeah, yeah. Seti, but maybe they too big. Like, let's say, like, right under them, right? Mm-hmm. Like, a Seti Hendrix or, like, Mm-hmm. Like my friend is more than that, but y'all probably don't know who he is, right? But like an artist that's independent, upcoming, like, up, upcoming. Yeah. But they doing that thing. They got buzz. They like probably right. fifty thousand followers. You know what I'm saying, right? What's the benefit of them joining a, a United Market? Yeah, so we work with like artists that are normally like in that I would say like field in that kind of like segment all the time. Mm-hmm. And so for them, like a big a big part of blowing up as an artist is artist development and artist development, which a lot of people I've seen recently kind of saying is has I would say like gone away in the music industry and that's kind of caused I would say the reason why you have a lot of artists coming and going Mm -hmm. we really focus on artist development because we're providing you the top music producers and songwriters that fit your style that's hard and that's That's done by our technology so we scan your discography which is basically all the music you've ever released and we recommend you musicians who match your tone whether that's a musician you need for a beat or a songwriter you need to help you with your lyrics that's fire, bro. Did you say this before in the interview? Did, did I miss that part? You said no, that? This is the first time I said it? It's like really. That's why I yeah, first time yeah. saying it. Yeah, that's, that's the first time. That's fire, bro. I'm like, I'm listening like, damn. So even, like, of course, we're going to use Guinea Pig, my, 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 my brother, more than mm-hmm. that, right? I was telling him he need writers. He finally got writers in like, like me. Mm-hmm. Keeping the team together is probably like, getting a team is cool. It's hard, right? Keeping but, it. But retaining that, re- that, te- that mm-hmm. ret- retention is probably the hardest part, right? So he has a team and he's like, man, I like him. But mm-hmm. it's like everybody doing their thing, their own thing, and it's like it's hard to get them because they busy doing that thing. They trying to make money, right? right? So it's hard to get them to be locked in on this one thing because like if a bigger bad call, then I'm over here with it. I don't got time. I'm inconsistent for the mm-hmm. like. So the fact that you guys have this, so all right, walk me through it. If I'm a producer, or artist, whatever, I sign up mm-hmm. on the app, right? And you just do this automatically. They write the songs. I like it. I don't like it. I choose from the the, the bank. How does, like, talk to me about that. Yeah, so we have a slew, I would say, of services for musicians. So, like, as you kind of mentioned, as an artist, I come on United Market, I'm able to essentially, I connect my Spotify, I connect my Apple Music, we then scan that. From that, we look at all the beats from your top songs, and then we recommend you producers who have beat store on their United Market account that fit those criteria. The second stage would then be you could then use our songwriter AI tool, which helps you generate song lyrics and verses, essentially, based off of keywords that have generated top hits in comparison to your current discography and your top songs. So it helps kind of learn from your flow. It's almost like your personal assistant that learns from what do you like, and it generates outputs that actually help you be able to write your songs and help, I would say, studio inefficiency. And so for artists, that's kind of like a big thing because studio's time is one of the most expensive, I would say, expenses for independent musician. And we create tools to help save them time and money there. Mm. Um, that I would say that extends all the way to like our demo feature, which allows you to hear your voice on a full track from a thirty second clip. So you upload a thirty second clip, you upload a beat, you type out the lyrics, and it generates a full complete output, and you can hear yourself on the song before you even record it. And that kind of stuff saves these musicians time and money, which allows them to go to the studio session and actually be able to be more efficient. Yo, this episode is sponsored by The Morning Meetup. Man, shout out to my guy, David Shines, man. He's probably one of the few people I know who actually built multiple multi-million dollar businesses, right? He created The Morning Meetup to help other entrepreneurs do the same thing. Now, listen, as an entrepreneur myself, I know how hard it can get, especially when we start making money and we get to like this financial cap that we can't get past. 
And honestly, let's be real. They say it ain't what you know, it's who you know. We probably can't get past this cap because we either, one, outgrew the people around us, or two, we just being lazy and weighing in the rooms we need to be in. It's just plain and simple. But trust me, this is your time because the morning meetup is that room we got to be in. It's filled with, filled with entrepreneurs getting to it. They reading different books every month, right? They holding each other accountable. And it's just honestly just something dope to be a part of. So listen, if you're an entrepreneur and you're trying to get to this bag, you're trying to flourish more than you've been flourishing now, you got to go to the morningmeetup.com. That's www.themorningmeetup.com and join now. Let's get to it. I'll see you there. This is crazy. So wait, let's run real quick. Ron, sincere. Right? Mm -hmm. You what did you guys go to school for? I I went to school for business and marketing. Okay. I was like communications marketing, but what I went into doesn't really like no, I like, match that. How did <laughs> that's ask, how did y'all get into this? Cause this is kind of like tech, right? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tell this part. Honestly, he came, it's like, man, it's a long story, bro. A long story. But I would say he came with the bright idea. Him and uh like he said, our other co-founder, uh William. They came with this idea, you know, in our dorms. Uh, I was focused on business, of course, just for like prior experience and working like in the music industry, like with my, I have my own independent record label. Um, and they came and was like, like he said though, we didn't know music would be it. You know, our app at first was originally like designed for- Like just LinkedIn. A, it was like LinkedIn. So a bunch of people, a bunch of services, like we weren't targeted to the music industry yet. So. You know, it's kind of crazy how now, like, you look at our majors, you wouldn't think we would go to school and become, I would say, tech founders. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think it just came together. I think it was just what it was supposed to be. So, what's the correlation to United Market and tech? Oh, well, I would say we're, like, we're tech-powered. So, like, the core fundamentals of our business is technology. Mm -hmm. um, we just do a lot of stuff in the music business with, like, our actual, like, team members. We're heavily involved in the industry, like, hands-on. But everything that we, like, all of our, like, services and things that we offer are powered by technology. And so that's kind of what I would say our correlation to, like, being tech-powered is. But wait, though, because that comes, let's say if I'm, I'm a... Uh... A purist, right? Like a, I don't know, hip hop purist, or I don't know, just I like to do things my, myself. Mm -hmm. it's always been like that. Like, man, this computer shit is trash, right? Some AIs are trash. Some, some are oh, mediocre, so they they're really good at one thing, but they lack so many other things, right? For that person, right? I would like, bro, I want a person. Like, I can't depend on tech. How efficient is it, or how good is it? Matter of fact, scratch that question. What are some of the flaws in y'all in the tech space that y'all operate in right now? Don't so, tell me why it's so good. Tell me the, some of the flaws. Flaws? I would say... User-friendliness. How user-friendly it is. That's okay. one of them. Um, kind of complicated to get. Mm -hmm. Okay. To get onboarded because of how much information it collects so that it can be useful for you. Um, but that was I, a good spin. But and you're saying yeah, in the, I, that was a good spin. You're saying in the tech say, space, right? Yeah, but I would yeah, say like, to, yeah, yeah, okay. to answer your question, the original one and, and like with this one as well is we only are artificial intelligence based for certain services. Eighty percent of our platform is human interaction. Okay, it's you. It's like me. I make beats. You are artists. Me connecting and being able to have a real conversation with you. I can even like video call you, like Zoom set up through our platform. So 80% of our platform is human interaction. The AI mm. just learns from that so that it can actually recommend you users to actually mm. connect with. It's kind of like sent on Instagram showing you the other entrepreneurs and people who might be doing dope stuff in spaces where they might have just not ran across your radar Like yet. the For You page, kind of. Yeah. Used to be, yeah. Then it yeah. used to be that. Right now, I don't the know. Explore yeah. page? Oh, yeah, Explore page. Yeah, it's Explore page. So right. it's like we really are focused on the like social algorithm in which we promote so that you get value all the time. Like if you're not using a service with a direct like value add that we offer, you're actually able to like connect with people, network with people globally, share files, work together in real time on tracks. Mm. And that comes from us being able to actually give you the proper outputs, which are the proper people that match the stuff that you're looking to do and accomplish. That's crazy. See, I'm learning myself. So how do y'all ensure that, because like, again, we talk about mm -hmm. uh, retention, team retention, right? How do you ensure that the person that you connected with, because again, they're still independent, right? Mm -hmm. That they're 
they're, they're solely compatible, not compatible. They're solely dedicated for you and what you got going on. And they're not about to just stop and go chase an, another bag, another opportunity for a different bag. You're saying in terms of the team or in terms of our users? The user. Like, if, like that's how I sign up, right? Mm -hmm. AI say, yo, I think we should match with this, 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 this person. Mm -hmm. Cool. I like this person beats. I like their lyrics or whatever. I'm going to link with them. We lock in. They write the song for me. I'm trying to get a tweet. How do you ensure that that person is not going to be the same person that I meet, I don't know, on the corner somewhere or in the, in the networking event? Oh, well, it's, it's going to be a little bit of both because you're going to, yeah. you have, like, musicians are all types of people. They're creatives. So um, the first point is, like, as musicians, they're all hungry to work. Mm -hmm. And so they're going to work with you. They're going to work with other musicians. And that's kind of how you develop a sound mm -hmm. and how, you, I would say, you're able to become established in the industry. But we, like, as mentioned earlier, we target all demographics. So you're going to have the first-time creators who might have just got a, uh, a keyboard for Christmas, and now they're making beats. And you're going to have the developed dude who's a Grammy or two in who also will use our service. And so it's the pure, mere fact that you're able to get in contact with these people, mm. whether they're at Grammy level or just starting out, and be able to actually build, like, real-time relationships and things of that nature mm. through our platform because we really focus on for those top guys, creating an ecosystem in which they can give back to the community and work with the upcoming and promote that next wave in a way that best fits their schedule, how their teams and management is structured. And so that it really allows for there to kind of be that perfect ecosystem of when we all talk about how can we all win together, we create that environment on our platform. How do you guys ensure, you would think I was an artist, I know. How do you guys ensure that, uh, because I think credit is like a, Something that uh, artists deal mm -hmm. with a lot, right? Not getting credit, not getting writers credit, um, a sample being stolen and things like that. Mm -hmm. How do you guys deal with that and ensure that people aren't getting ripped off and they are getting credit for the, the things that they're producing? Yeah, so the very first thing that we do in, to ensure that is we partner with another music tech company known as Muso, and that's their whole bread and butter is making sure that musicians are credited. And we partner with them, and now every musician on our platform are able to connect their accounts the Muso accounts, and as they do new songs, as new songs they do on the platform come out, they're automatically added to their profile to show other projects they've been a part of, which kind of helps you find who you want to work with because you can kind of tra track and see, mm. hey, what did this guy do before? Like, I reach out to him. Was he a part of Drake's latest tape? You see what I'm saying? So that's kind of where we kind of work on the credit side. Um, and then the paperwork, contracts flow through our platform. Um, we have a global network of over 800 different music, music contracts that you're able to use through our platform depending on the needs that you may have. And so it also ensures that you're going to get credit because your name's in black and white as well for the actual audio file. Yeah, this is fire. Yo, I seen y'all talk about um, this, I uh, believe. Y'all are able to, like, find out if artists had music out there and not being credited for or, yeah. like, copyright things and stuff like that. Yeah, content mm -hmm. ID. How the hell y'all able to do that? Is that is this something normal? Because I might just be, I yeah, might be giving y'all too much credit. Is that no, that's like a normal thing, or is this something new? Because it's normal, it's just not efficient. I would say we built on top of it. Yeah. Um. So it's like content IDing, and so a lot of times independent artists just leave money out there in general. We do it. We take it a step further. Um, we help content ID in the Web three space. So that's like block, you leveraging blockchain technology, and so that's actually getting you money that you're owed from these new. Web3 platforms that are coming out, a lot of people don't realize that like in the Web3 space, every social platform that we use, there's a version. And from Instagram, Twitter, et cetera, musicians get paid, but from those other platforms, there's money out there that they did not even know they're aware of, and we're collecting that as well. I don't know if y'all know this, right? But it will help if y'all do. It will be fire. It will help with credibility. Just curious. What's the percentage of artists who might have music out there and don't know? Um, well, only it's only like what I think six percent of artists on Spotify have over fifty thousand monthly listeners, and so that would leave like ninety four percent probably have less, and so that tends to be the demographic in which I would probably say you're gonna have at least there's like eight, like eighteen million musicians on Spotify. You don't have to give me real numbers. You're gonna have you. probably like thirteen million of that that doesn't know there's music out there because. From the, like, the data that we, we collect a lot of data at our company. Um, 
that tends to be the time once you get a management team, which is going to be the people who are going to be checking if you have money owed. Okay. And so usually the ones who don't have managers face these problems. Yes, because mm-hmm. it's Glad like know that. the music industry is very much so. We'll we'll take your money until you tell us to stop, and that's the kind of the unfortunate part about it is these musicians will like if you don't sign up for a publisher. Like your money just kind of gets like built up, and then you're having to go back and claim money you're owed. You would think they would notify you, hey, you just did a song, you need to create this account. That's not how it is. And so you have a lot of people who don't know about that kind of stuff. And we really learned about that as, because that's the type of questions we ask when you sign up on our platform. Do you have a publishing account? Do you have this? If so, who do you have? Who do you do it with? And that's how we're able to really, I would say, get stuff done faster, which helps people get paid faster. Because when a record happens, we have all that information, which is then populated into a contract and sent out. Yo, so what about, all right, so I think one of the things that I hear about with these artists is, like, it's so hard to get an audience when it comes to streaming. It's, like, it's super, like, hard people to give grow up. Here. People give up? That's why. it's These artists you see with these, like, huge fan bases, like these cult-like followings, it's because they just stay consistent with it. Mm-hmm. I would say most artists like until you find your like your niche, like everybody don't know how. I would say every every artist doesn't know who to target. You know who's their demographic. Who are they gonna market to? I think once you find that, that makes it like a lot easier. And it takes time. Like you know, a lot of artists, people come into this industry. You like, especially with social media. Like I would say that's like the biggest. I don't want to say a negative thing because it's positive because it helps independent artists and people like it, you know blow it, up overnight. There's a lot of instant gratification for sure. Exactly. But people the, see it, they be like, "I want, I want that." Bro. Exactly. But you, if you look at our major artists like who run the game today, these guys have been here for ten years plus. Mm-hmm. Like, if you don't know the background history, you won't. You'll think, "Oh, you know, the baby just blew up. Mm. The baby been rapping for how many years? Like, he's what, like thirty? Probably like 29, 30 29, yeah, yeah. somewhere yeah, around there. Like so, but it's like the average person, the average artist coming into the industry. It's like, oh, I'm gonna rap. I'm gonna, I want a million monthly listeners. I want to blow up. I want a chain or this or that. But they don't see like the time that goes into building that. You know, as he said, five, ten million monthly listeners. You know, how do you get that fan base? How can you go on tour? How can you do all of these things that we see our biggest artists do? But you have some artists that have been doing it for like ten years, and like they still don't have a crazy. Audience and they're yeah. good, right? I mean, yeah. I, I you do I empathize with those guys. I don't know about y'all, but it's guys mean, that's really talented that's just it's not hitting for them for real. And you have a lot of people yeah. who have streams who don't have followings. That's one thing that we've really realized mm-hmm. from just interactions um, with like artists that we deal with or that we're trying to get onto the platform is you have a lot of people who have large fan bases like from the music side and just don't have that many followers, and that those really. I would say are the undercover gems because mm. it's like the, so, there's two games to being an artist, and he always reminds me of that as well as like being able to sell the show and then making money from your music, and that kind of is what an artist has to decide at one point in their career what kind of musician they want to be, and that kind of dictates the decisions that you make and what aspects of the music industry you focus on. Yeah, it's a guy from um, Baltimore. I think he uh, he has tapped into like this space where he utilized bots to get listeners oh, or whatever. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And about. But he gets paid for it, it, it the, the, the mm-hmm. songs chart and everything. What are y'all, I did, what are y'all thoughts on that? Do y'all know about the bot game? It's and, horrible. Yeah, we you don't like really it? deal with yeah, that. We, yeah. The DSPs will like, normally like suspend you if they find <clears> out. And so we tend to fly a very fine, straight line in regards to making sure that all of our musicians are by the book. Mm. Okay. I was just curious because Seem like it's working. He make money from it. Like uh, he had this documentary mm-hmm. on um, Vice, where what's the guy that passed away that played in um, what was it The Wire? I forgot his name. Omar, what was his name? I forgot. But he had a, a show on Vice with Joe. They were talking about it, and like they were saying how it worked. Cause I guess a lot of uh, what's the resellers do it when they when they buying shoes. Mm, they, they yeah, yeah, bots. they use bots. Yeah, yeah so. I mean, clearly it worked. I was just, I was just curious, like how that worked. You can see stuff like that, though. A lot of people don't know that there's like databases and like technology to see, you know, bots and different things, you know, on the back end side of things. Um, but yeah, we tend to stay away from that. Mm-hmm. We like to keep everything as organic as possible. Yeah. 
Bro, this is dope, bro. I like this. So, I guess what would the elevator pitch be? Are, are we here? This I, I like it, right? Matter mm -hmm. of fact, before I get to the elevator pitch, how much does it cost? How much does it cost? Yeah, if I'm an art, artist, producer, writer, trying to get on the app, right? Is it cost up yeah, for the app? Yeah. Or how much it cost? So, um, we're launching a f actual a freemium in the next thirty days, but right now it's about thirty dollars or it's forty five dollars a month. Forty-five dollars a month, or three hundred dollars a year. Three hundred. So it means I pay three hundred dollars a year. Mm -hmm. I'm unlimited access to writers and and all of our new like we're very product led and we're how we build our company. So we are constantly pushing features. So it's and we don't increase our price tag. And so all of our users that we've amassed thus far are were grandfathered in. So they didn't actually have to actually go through a price increase. Um, just new customers who are now just catching the wave. That's that new premium price. So $30, $45 a month. Mm -hmm. $300 a year. $300 a year. But y'all still get the percentage on the back end as like a management company would. It's no. We get no. we take an A and R percentage, which is five on a track. On each track. Yeah, then mm -hmm. it comes to our platform, which is really lower than what an A and R takes. Okay. So we're cheaper in regards to dealing with the actual A and R. But of course, we work alongside many of them. So it kind of goes hand in hand. That's cool. I like that. So what's the elevator pitch? Like, how do y'all get people? Oh, come on. Oh, United Market builds technology solutions for the next generation of musicians. That ain't an elevator pitch. That's a slogan. What's the elevator pitch? Like, you pull up to an artist or a producer or writer, and you're like, yo, I do. I'm with uh, United Market. This is why you should hop on. I know we just went through all that, but what's the elevator pitch? Just quick, 30 seconds, whatever. That would be getting them. Yeah, they, they that, be curious yeah, about quick. what do you mean by tech, and then it's like yeah, that's really that smart. The, the technology then, then it, catches them, and yeah. then it's like then they ask, and then that goes to the whole spill because like one thing I had to learn is having like I am really involved in the tech front of our company, how to like talk to actual artists and not just sound like hey who how, here are all these cool features we have actually mm -hmm. tell you how you get value from it. That's how that's what right. the consumer cares about, not being so techy and wordy. So when we say the next generation of musicians, they're like. What do you mean by tech? And then I'm, I kind of show them. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what really ends up getting them to be like, oh, this is dope. And that's what's kind of making us a new hub for specifically artists at this point. We got our bread and butter working with music producers, but now we're seeing a lot more traction with artists because uh -huh. they want to be able to do, be at a one-stop shop where they can connect with the hottest young producer, songwriter, and handle the business from start to finish on our platform. Yeah, that's good. So I said I wasn't gonna use it, but it was one question I did like about um recommendations about uh artists. I don't remember. I don't either. This the one I sent you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like this one. I like this one. Vent venture capital in that business. Like how like recommendations on it. I, what is that? First of all, I don't even know what that is. Oh. It stood out. That was one of them. Oh, yeah. Do you remember that question? <laughs> I know. It's, I know it's <laughs> like, what is about. that? Like, yeah. So, um, venture capital is essentially like just institutional funding, and so that was what when I said my major didn't match what I actually got into because that was kind of like my personal first introduction into technology, which led to me then coming back to like my friends and saying, "Hey, like this is an opportunity for us." Venture capital is just like funding for your business. So all of these large conglomerates like Coca Cola, any like Canon, etc. Um, those are all venture capital backed companies from institutional funding. And normally to like people of our color, they only, we only receive around like 1% of funding. And for mm -hmm. us, um, I would feel like the reason why we were able to receive capital and to be blessed to receive capital, especially as like African, African American men of color, um, was my two plus years that I actually worked in venture capital while I was at Morehouse. And for African American people, that's very, normally very hard to actually get funding from these institutions that are normally offering capital to our counterparts. So now you're state. talking, how do, how, how, like, what's the recommendations? How do you get to the bag? Yeah, so I would say for us was we focus on actually building a profitable business. It's very easy, especially in this demographic, kind of like you, talked to, you guys talked about earlier, like instant gratification, where you see someone doing something that you want and you kind of build your business specifically like that. Like you mm -hmm. just focus on clout, mm -hmm. focus on likes, things of that nature. And some businesses, actually that is their, like that's what, how they make money, you know? Mm -hmm. But for us, we were always like, we, we were fine with being the people that no one knows that's actually a profitable business. Mm -hmm. And so for us, that led to us being able to raise our most recent round on our own terms. 
Um, and that came from us being able to put up our own capital and kind of really build a very strong business. But these, uh, my bad, I'm, what, what? Okay. I'm saying these artists, like they're barely getting streams, so they ain't making no money. Like how do they, how does their music business become profitable? Like, bro, I'm fucking going to the studio session, spending all my money, I don't got no money. Like how do, how do you, you have to grow like it? That? Yeah. Oh, well, venture capital is for companies. For mm-hmm. artists, you're going to be dealing more so with like alternative capital opportunities. So like the Beat Breads, which we recently just partnered with where they actually empower musicians. So they partnered with institutions and actually help musicians be able to essentially get advances on future music, et cetera. And that kind of allows them to put money in their pocket. Mm. Um, and so those are the type of, I would say, companies that are out there that are actually helping musicians be able to put money in their pockets instantly. It's But that normally you have to be at a normal around 10,000 monthly listeners. And so people prior to that are still having to kind of build just kind of like how we were as entrepreneurs, where it just you're building to get your foot in the door at that point. And after you get your foot in the door, that's when those opportunities kind of allow you to build leverage to, I would say, gain, gain access to capital. Because mm. capital prematurely is kind of what ends up leading to a lot of the artists that we know now not having the careers that they wanted to have because of deals they took too early. This is fire, bro. All right, I'm done with the interview. I do have a question, right? So I have a friend. He does... Um, uh shit. He deals with like music catalog and um mm-hmm. buying people catalog. But y'all paint what's y'all thoughts on you t- that? You t- we t- do that who was I speaking to about that? Was it you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yep, seven. So what like what like is that a a good thing? Like why are people doing it? Uh it's like a, it's an investment. So the music business yeah. last year was one of the most profitable businesses. And so a lot of people don't realize it's like Bert uh Warren Buffett is one of the largest shareholders in music rights. Um and Music industry increased by like thirty percent last year, and like music rights really are like they're one of the most profitable businesses that are sustainable, and that's why you have a lot of people who are buying them now. Um, you have companies like Influencer Media Partners who bought like Futures, DJ Khaled, Justin Timberlake, like because you give you an advance, and when you look at people's music, like we get people's royalty statements, you know how much someone's gonna make a month, mm. especially when someone has like hits like a Future or a Metro Boomin. So it's like, I give you an advance on that, maybe for six years, but on that seventh year, like, I made my money back. And that eighth year, and that ninth year, and it's an asset, because I can go put in a movie that I want. And that's kind of who's buying it, is people who are partnered oh. with other conglomerates, where it's like, I can go put Metro's music, like that Spider-Man song, in a movie, and Metro might not get paid from that now. But he got an advance on it, so he got a fat payday up front. So wait, so wait, 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 that's hard. So you know how they say you're supposed to have seven streams of income, right? Mm-hmm. So you mean to tell me... I pay an artist for that catalog, right? I return, I, in return, I get the monthly, how much, whatever they get for and the monthly, you, right? Wherever it's on the radio. You so own it. So I get that, and I can then place it, you can put it myself your, in movies and get recoup that, yeah. too. And you can put it on your right. podcast, because that's another thing where, like, Damn. where musicians, like, I would say, have issues, like, copyright. Like, mm. so they'll put stuff on, like, a, a YouTube video, and it'll get copyrighted. Cause like right now we're about to do a partnership with Phase for their mu- for their like content, um, but that's like the biggest thing. And so for artists, it's like buying catalog is a big bag. Yeah, we tend to do it like we don't do we don't buy masters, but we essentially like offer artists advances on for like normally two to three years, well two to five years depending on the artist, and it helps our like revenue model tremendously. What's the ba- biggest bag y'all dropped on somebody catalog and who? Um, so we did Savvy Third for about a quarter million by like. What, like, maybe like three weeks ago, and like, how y'all get the quarter million against mine? Oh, um, we raise a lot of money, bro. I don't ever, I don't, I, I, t- I told you, I'm, never, I'm not gonna disclose it, but we raise a lot of money. We raise a lot of money. Y'all scamming, bro. Come on, man. Tell me. <laughs> like, tell nah, me, man, what's going nah, on? Nah. That? A quarter nah, million? No scamming. No scamming. No scamming. A quarter million. So we, we pay taxes on it. Should we, we say we we actually have say it, man. Bigger, Y'all better all right, talk all right. that shit, man. Well, we didn't we didn't close this deal, but just like in terms of like numbers that we're we're able to like raise the bar, we were actually gonna do a um a Kevin Gates deal that was worth About what was that like five like half a million About half a million like half a million to like seven hundred and fifty somewhere like along there was gonna be, but I mean the catalog business is huge. So from people that's that's looking into buying it, right? Mm-hmm. How do you make your money in return? Like how? Because like for me, I'm like you give somebody a, a million. You so, gonna just make it? You gonna so, bank on making that back so, over five years? So, 
Yeah. Oh, for example, Savvy, we gave him a quarter million. He makes 21K a month, a month. for us. We gave him You're a monetizing million. off of it. We gave him it. a quarter million up front. Well, that's, a quarter million was really what he took home. The total deal was like three something, but he makes 21K a month. So we now. How long y'all got it for? Let me see. Two years. Two years. So 20, for two years, that don't. 21 times 24 is 500. Yeah. Why would I even do that as an artist? Because you you can do more with a quarter million now than what exactly. You can. Okay, cool, 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 cool. But then you get it back after the second year. Yeah, and the whole time the good thing about us is like we move it for you. And normally with musicians is we give you a still a percentage during the term, just so that you actually want to still like push your music and things of that nature. I'm about to so, say, why are you doing that? That don't make sense. Yeah, we do it. I gave like, you your money, man. I get, we, we, I we, we, we're artist friendly. Yeah. We're artist friendly. We're, we're not greedy because there's scalability in not being greedy. And that's kind of why for us, like we've never been greedy in regards to percentage. We've always been the cheapest option. We have always the most affordable option. Because like you said, there's more people out here that are like the average than you are going to be taxing someone a premium price. So, just curious, right? Let's say you got an average guy. I don't yeah. know. What's the average musician stream monthly? I feel like average, average, average regular, like, like not. Don't give me ten thousand. Like I feel like you get like ten thousand monthly listeners. That's why. How I'm much is that? Yeah. Probably like a hundred dollars. How much is that? Like what the deal would be? No, how much would they be bringing in uh, monthly? Yeah, yeah. like no, uh, ten thousand is gonna probably be like you might. It depends. Like you have because mm. with like with we've seen artists that have uh, had a lot of streams that didn't. We weren't able to give them that much money because their streams weren't where their streams were coming from. Like the locations. Weren't ge- like weren't areas where there was like those were more expensive listeners, I would say, and their catalog wasn't in other things that was making money. So let's say ten thousand streams a month. How probably much? Like eight hundred dollars a month. I would probably say is what you're making from your music. That's not bad. I mean, it's not bad. I mean, it's a stepping stone. N- none of it is bad from an artist's perspective because when you're like climbing, the biggest thing is being able to make a dollar mm. off of your music. So you know, if you can make a dollar off of your music, then it's you know, once profit, you get proof, you see, you can prove that that model. So you just have to grow it from there. So I mean, I don't think no number is bad because it's artists who can't make nothing off of. So would y'all music. buy a regular artist? Like, let's say you make eight hundred dollars a month. I don't know, right? Would y'all buy buy his catalog? It probably won't make sense. Well, we really because we are a smaller team. It's us. It's four of us that are um, co-founders, and then we have a few employees. It's like we really focus primarily. On, I would say, like more premium, like a premier clientele. When it comes to artists, yeah, yeah, me. When it comes to musicians, we we deal with everybody. But when it comes to artists, because we're not that big of a team, and so we kind of focus on deals like the Savvies, and we do those more frequently. They're not as like weekly, but they're like they happen. They happen more, but it moves the business so that we can hire the team Mm. that would be able to then do all types of deals. But we do deal with all caliber artists, but the. Primary people that we're dealing with that we're buying catalogs from is going to be that like higher tier. A lot of these companies like that people work for, it's not they're not public, but they still make money. I'm like I'm trying to understand that your, your your job just went public, right? What do you mean? What like, do you mean? Oh, like IPO Inc. Yeah, and that's what. Are y'all IPO public? Is it is it public or? Oh no, mm-hmm. that's the goal though. Okay, so One the day. goal is going to be to IPO. Is that hard to do with something? Yes, yeah, very hard to do. What it's like you have to. Like, that's normally, like, a multi-billion dollar company. Okay, cool. So, let me ask you this, then. Y'all gonna get there, right? So, we gonna just talk yeah, that for in sure. fruition. We gonna talk that into existence. Are y'all going to give the artist that's a part of the platform, like, um, stock? Or, like, isn't that shares? Yeah, so, we actually have an artist equity program that we are now going to be rolling out alongside our recent fundraising round um, that actually allows people that are at the, I would say, at the foundation of our company, which mm. is, I would say, our anybody been below our first hundred thousand users, um, we're gonna have like you have part ownership, Damn. and we're gonna start even when we um, raise further um, capital, we're gonna start allowing our actual artists to be able to put up money, things of that nature as well, and oh. letting them to be able to actually buy in at the same company that they're fueling. That's yo, you know, it'll be hard too. Y'all probably wasn't expecting these questions. It's this live, is right? right? Yeah. But it's the first time anybody <laughs> hearing that. <laughs> Yo, you know what would be hard? If y'all could, right? Let's say, I mean, well, y'all raise y'all money. If the artist that was a part of the platform had the the opportunity to be investors in, like, some of the deals, right? Let's say 
y'all trying to raise money. Like, are we trying to get another artist or... Yeah, let's like say y'all deal? trying to raise... Yeah. Could you say y'all raise money? Y'all raise money. Let's say y'all trying to raise money to get... um, uh, Buy somebody catalog, right? Mm. Imagine if you could... Like, the artist that's on your platform, they would have first take... Like, a first look at the artist that y'all want to buy a platform, right? And let's mm. say y'all have a number. Let's say it costs a quarter million, right? Mm. We're looking to raise... But y'all only give it to the artist first or the people that's a part of the, the, the pl platform first, right? We're looking... Hey, guys, we're looking to raise... Five hundred thousand dollars to buy mm -hmm. such and such catalog, right? You guys, this is private information, right? You guys have people sign NDAs already, I guess. When y'all sign them on the platform, if you bring X, Y, and Z, you get X, Y, and Z. So let's say if you have fifty thousand towards it or a hundred thousand mm -hmm. towards it in cash, liquid cash, you'll get a one percent, two percent. You know what I'm saying? Like right. whatever that 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 would be crazy too, because then like you have some artists out here that that's working but still making music that got some money up. But you know what I'm saying? Like, they looking for investments. That probably would be fire, bro. Instead of going to whoever you go to because you ain't trying to go to Sauce, give up the Sauce yeah. to get the investment. If y'all go straight to the artist oh, first. We went, to, we went through uh, Venture Capital, bro. We that would be hard, yeah. though. <laughs> nah, that would be hard, though. Yeah. But you should think about that. People finna watch this and be like, oh, yeah. man. Y'all should think about that, bro. Because think about it. Because if you got a, if you got 10,000 people on your... um. Your yeah, platform. your your platform, it's right? A more than that now. It was ten thousand. We was at more house, right? So that's just at the at the bare minimum, right? <sighs> if you can get everybody to give you, I don't know, five hundred dollars. Let's see, times five hundred. That's five million dollars, right? And let's just say anybody that get five hundred dollars get a one percent. Uh, percent of whatever deal y'all doing, or let's say they give a little bit more. I don't know. I'm just making up shit. Mm -hmm. Y'all trying to do a deal for five hundred thousand? You give people give ten thousand? You get ten percent of the deal for the bro? Like what? Yeah. That shit. Yeah. yeah. Like y'all want this different type of conversation? Like, I'm like this crazy. It's big. Nah, man, I appreciate y'all, man. This is hard, bro. Thank you. This for is sure. dope. Thank you, bro. Nah, man. Y'all weren't expecting these questions. I told you, bro. Yeah, shit, cool. Y'all should write some of this down. Nah, <laughs> nah, you, I'm definitely gonna look back at these questions. <laughs> nah, he can't yeah, with the questions. Hard, the bro. questions is hard. Nah, this is hard, bro. All right, so I, I guess, man, um, let the people know how to follow you, how to lock in with the app one more time and everything. Yeah, so the business Instagram is United Market. You can follow us at United Market. Mm -hmm. um, my Instagram is UMCL Ron. Um, yeah, like you said, business Instagram. My personal Instagram is. Double underscore sincere, mm -hmm. S E N C E R E. Yeah. Nah, I appreciate it, man. Um, hopefully, y'all get some um some artists that that come rock with y'all after this, man. For real, I wish y'all nothing but success. Y'all got something dope going on, like really, like I'm really interested in. Like this is crazy. Thank this you, bro. Crazy. Yeah, that's why I've been trying to connect hey, with you bad. for I a minute. Man. Don't do that, man. Don't we on? Hey, man, Jay Hill, nah. Jay Hill on the podcast. Camera, <laughs> it's a wrap. We are. <laughs> <laughs> nah, my bad.